Uh, we'll play that for Kat and everyone on the third floor at MPL, which is uh, Paul McCartney's uh, organisation. It is indeed. It? Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, they're on a quality Christmas song, especially for Billy. We've played quite a few. We'll try and get another one in before the end of the show. You missed uh, Just Like Christmas by Low. But hi yeah. to you all there at MPL, yeah. If only Paul McCartney had made a top hit Christmas song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, we want your chain suggestions still following on. Please, 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 by Brown. James Brown to radcliffe.maconey at bbc.co.uk and uh, 64046 on the text and put a phone number on those, please. But uh, there was uh, Paul McCartney, Wings and uh, Band on the Run. Um, on tour mm. at the moment, uh, big show in Liverpool big show. tonight. Um, uh, doing no interviews um, except this show, really. Fantastic. We yeah. have, um, we should say again, this is mainly down to Lizzie's hard work and, and, and tenacity on our Indeed behalf. So, Indeed so, so. yes, we were allowed into his inner sanctum uh, last night, Alka Pops and I, we were going in uh, over on the... We were actually both, you know, kind of... we have gone into that quietness that we realised we're both quite nervous. I've, I've, that's the third time I've interviewed him, or maybe the fourth. But it's still, every time... You basically, if you're interested in pop music, it's like if you're interested in literature, you're interviewing Shakespeare, aren't you? Well, he's the biggest star, biggest pop star in the world. I mean, you know, the terms of the heritage and everything, isn't it? There? There's yeah. no one in the world who hasn't heard of we, Paul McCartney. We were discussing who, who, who was even comparable. Dylan and Elvis. And, and, and well, you're not going to get an Elvis you're interview. You're going to struggle with Elvis. Yeah. I would think, you know, Dylan is was more important, but McCartney continues to be kind of yeah. more of a force in a way than Dylan. But it's hard to think. But anyway, it was. It's like it is like me. I mean, I've met him a couple of times, and uh, like you know, he uh, played in our old Radio One show. Mm. I played the drums for him mm. on one song, and also, but the, the thing that I always remember doing him at Abbey Road for that Radio mm. Two sold on song series. And it was just me and him in Abbey Road, and he was sitting there with an acoustic guitar, and he said, "So when I wrote Blackbird," and he's just doing it, yeah. and you think, "Wow, yeah. do you know what yeah. I mean?" <laughs> Well, he is, he is like interviewing Mozart or Shakespeare. And um, and um, we got there and we saw the sound check. Yeah, which this is, is, which is I didn't know this went on. Which is intriguing. We basically were taken into the, the MEN arena, which had about 60 of us in there. I'd say the huge arena, but just about 60 was in there. And he walked on stage very, in a very intimate setting and played a whole load of songs that he didn't then play at the regular gig. He played things like... Um, let me roll. No, he, he, let, he did let me roll in the actual set. Things like Penny Lane, right? Yesterday, Bluebird, Honey Don't, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying, a few kind of jams and stuff. Did a whole load of stuff that he didn't do in the actual show that night, and it was clearly a little bijou, intimate, exclusive show of its own. And and I said to him, so I began by by asking him, saying, Well, I are not. You you've already done one show tonight, then, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, really, all we have to do is check the instruments, but if we just checked them, we'd get bored. So we've got enough numbers to kind of throw some in, and then if they start to sound really good, we always stick that in the show. So, but it does become its own little thing, and what happens is that some of the people who come to the show buy a special ticket and come to this one. We, you know, we want to try and entertain them. They've paid good money. Yeah. How do you make those decisions about the set? Is it how you feel on the day, or is it, um, you know, where you are in the world, and does geography affect it? Yeah, you know, if you're in uh, Russia, you might do back in the USSR. For instance. <laughs> of you <know>. course. <laughs> yeah, if you're in Scotland, you might just throw in Mullock and Tyre. <laughs> Yeah, it is, there is a bit of that. I mean, I think the main thing is we just do, first of all, what we think the audience might like. Secondly, what we like, which is very important because we don't, we can't throw in stuff that they like, but we don't. Mm. And then we throw in a, bit, a few things that they may not know, but that we think would be interesting because they don't know them. Yeah. And um, then we look and see what we did last time here, for yeah, instance, yeah. and we try not to do too many of the same numbers. I mean, yeah. inevitably, there are a lot of the same songs, but we try and open with something different, for instance. So a few little things like that yeah, come into yeah. it. This tour has been rave reviews. It, feel, it feels like it's a really energised, you know, it does, it does feel like you, uh, you this is like, it, it, I'm clearly you've been doing this, you know, you've to the man of bomb, but it does feel like there's something different now, again. Yeah, it's weird. That's what we've been thinking. I mean... I think one of the things is the band's nearly been together 10 years. Yeah. Le next February, we will have been playing this same band together 10 years. So we are getting the hang of it. So I think that helps. But then earlier in the year, we went to South America and they do love the music there. Mm. And so you've only got to go, hey, that was it. They go, yeah, go crazy. So I think that gave us more confidence this year. And we kept saying, God, you know, they're on fire. Yeah. these audiences yeah. Yeah. and uh, so we've kind of carried it through and even when you go to sort of let's say germany where it's a more sort of quieter discerning audience who've come to listen mm. not to boogie necessarily yeah. 
Um, you know, this confidence is still there. We think, oh, they're liking it, but they're just not making us much of a fuss. So, yeah, you know, we've just felt good this year, particularly about uh, playing and the audiences yeah. give it back, you know. Have things changed about playing live because of the way the industry's gone about records? That you know, the recorded music that was once like the prize you you owned an album and all that, and the, the mm. way the physical side of things. It seems to me that that's made live music and the concert experience like at the heart of what music's almost about now. You know, seeing people do it live. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, um, it's the sort of real thing yeah. left. You know, it, it, you come to a show and you're in the room. And I think that's a great part of the experience. I've been to concerts where I've thought, ooh, I'm in the room with, you know, Tony Bennett. Yeah. It's like he's in my living room. Yeah. And I then thought, wait a minute, people must probably think that about me. Yes, so, I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I think that's really true. And then when you make a mistake live, we always, now we turn it, we go, well, I'll tell you what, it proves we're live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we tell the stories about artists, not named, but artists that our crew know who aren't live. So we got our sound guy, Pablo, and he tells stories. He says, you know, he used to be on some tours, and at one point in the show, a little red light would go on, and he'd be live. Then he'd play that for 30 seconds, and the light would go oh, off, yeah. and he was, he was on tape again. So, you know, we're always very glad that at the end of the evening, there's just five of us get up there and take a bow, and yeah. there's nobody hidden under the stage yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah which yeah. I hear some naughty people do. I, I, I couldn't possibly no comment. Names. I couldn't possibly no comment. Names, no, no. no. I was thinking, you see the, the, the almost uh, the, the technological and physical and logistical uh, organisation behind a big tour mm. like this now. Mm. And then you look at the Beatles in their head and when they were the biggest group that had ever been then and it's four Vox AC30s or whatever. Maybe I'm mm. wrong. Was it, was it four Vox ac yeah, Exactly, yeah. Is that, well, you know, it's that kind of thing. Isn't that extraordinary? And it is, yeah. Um, yeah, look, and, and the joke is still sounded good. <laughs> it's just relative. You yeah. know, people then didn't expect good sound. Right. And so when we played Shea Stadium with the Beatles, we were playing through the baseball PA, which is normally a <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah. Manchester Club. Get your hot dogs. Something, you know. Yeah. Um, so we just had a laugh. We knew they couldn't hear us, plus they were screaming like a million seagulls. Yeah. So there's no way they were going to hear us. So we just, I say, we just got on with it and had a laugh. We thought, well, if they don't want to listen, that's not yeah. our fault. Yeah. Um, but the PAs were very weedy. Mm. Now, you know, because equipment's got much better, you can pretty much hear us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah. Do you ever think, I was thinking when you played yesterday, just tonight at the sound check, do you ever think the songs those songs have gone out and almost you can hear them as if someone else wrote them. Does that make sense? That they've well, become kind of in, in a domain that's outside of the personal experience of you writing them. Yeah, well, in a way, someone else did write them. It was a 24-year-old me. And yeah. I look back on him and think, I'm, I'm looking at his writing as if yeah. he's like another person. And, you yeah. know, some of the lyrics are going, that wasn't bad. It's good the way he did that. And it's funny, you know, people say that, don't you get fed up with doing the songs? I haven't got fed up at all. It's still very exciting because I'm like reviewing these songs and going, oh, it's pretty good the way that goes. Like, oh, changes key, does it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, it, it does. It kind of keeps it fresh, you know, just you're reviewing it all and reliving it all. And, you know, the live experience is a mad one because at the same time as you're singing and remembering words and remembering bass yeah. or chords, you're off on one. And you're thinking about, oh, Abbey Road, oh, I remember John coming up, oh, and well, yeah. what about when George said that? Oh, yeah. that was great. And you go, come back, come back, earth to ball, you're mm. on stage, don't go too far, you know. But it is, it's great, it's a lovely experience, mm. you know, and I say, you, you do look at the songs as if it was someone else, because in fact yeah. it was. Can you ever think about, can you ever hear particular lines or whatever, or do you think, what I'm thinking... What was I thinking then? Or do they all do they still almost come up immediately fresh that you know the experiences come back and whatever? No, I do. I, I say that's one of the things while you're trying to remember words and chords and everything, you're off thinking, what was I thinking? Yeah. Because I'm I'm thinking, you know, a 24 or so year old lad is yeah. singing, um, "I'm not half the man I used to be." Yeah, <laughs> you're 12 then. <laughs> you know, and it's like. My God, where did I get all that sort of s mm. seeming mm. experience yeah. from? Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, you load your computer with all these sort of thoughts and information that you've got from seeing 
Fred Astaire yeah. or watching great singers you love, and you put your thing together, and sometimes it's more than the person you are. Yeah. It's your yeah. imagination yeah. added to who you are. Yeah. In Manchester, I'm taking my life in my hands asking this, but you are in Manchester, but, but I imagine I wouldn't, f- I'd forgive you for the fact that you're probably looking forward a lot to tomorrow, which is Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. That becoming a, that's becoming a kind of tradition, isn't it, for you? Yeah, you know, it's, um, what, what started to happen is you'll do this big show and you'll go out to America, Yankee Stadium, or you'll go to Sao Paulo, Rio, you know, and then... You just sort of think, oh, it would be nice if the folks at home could see this. Yeah. It'd be nice, you know. So, yeah, we, we've done this for a couple of years now, just sort of bring it home. Last year, we played a little gig in Liverpool, so we didn't bring the big show, but we brought us. And this year, we're bringing the sort of big thing and uh, adding a couple of little things in Go for on. the last show on the tour. But it is just lovely to come home. Yeah. And will it be a bit emotional it being the last of what's been a fantastic tour? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, it is. It's uh, we've got a couple of songs that can get you emotional. They can yeah. catch you out, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I think I think it could easily be an emotional homecoming. And I'll have a lot of my relatives in the audience. You've got to remember that, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, and I saw some of them today, and they're all getting excited for yeah. tomorrow. The new record, the new album, mm. which has got two original songs, but I, b- I believe, I'm right, mm. the announcement only mm. came out today, is, is you exploring the kind of s- the, the standards, really, and the, mm. the great songbook of popular music that you grew up with. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the thing, the idea started because one of my fond- fondest memories from when I was a kid was the New Year's Eve sing-along. And, uh, you know, in Liverpool, that was, that was really big in our family. The family was quite musical. My dad had a little jazz band and his brother Jack was in it and a few f- people in the family were, were, could play. But my dad was the guy who played the piano at the New Year's Eve twos. They'd roll the carpet back and you'd get the nice kickback of the linoleum <laughs> and the girls would all sit around, the ladies, all the aunts and that, with their little, uh, you know, gin and it, rum and black. And they'd all sit around, slowly getting well-oiled yeah. and they'd sing all night they knew all these songs so as a kind of kid you know 10 year old it all just went in in. so i'm and i think when we came to write me and john came to write he's the same he didn't have the big sing-along thing but some of his favorite songs were from that era so i think we were like basing what we were doing in that era and then taking it more into the sort of rock and roll thing so the structure's still there so yeah I remember these things and then started with the project with that in mind and said to my producer said look you know told him the story so what about that song or that song or that song he said yeah okay and then we threw in some more I actually learned a few that I didn't know but I just fell in love with because somebody said what about that one yeah yeah, I don't yeah. know. Play it to me. They go, yeah. oh my god, yeah. my new favorite song. So uh, we and the other thing is we did try and avoid the most popular ones because there's a lot of records out at the mm. moment where everyone's doing the way you look tonight, yeah, yeah. which I love as a song. But if everyone's done it, so we tried to stay a little bit off piste. Yeah, yeah. And uh, found some songs that are kind of interesting. And and the, the two the two new original songs are in that idiom, aren't they? Yeah. Really. Yeah. Is that a deliberate? Yeah. It's deliberate exploring that kind of world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Which it, are lovely. Really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. Um, I like that kind of thing it's as I say it was part of my songwriting thing it always has been because of my love for the old songs and my respect for the structure of them they're like they're very well crafted yeah you know no matter what you say They've always been there and stuff, haven't you? From, you know, your, your mother should know or Honey Pie or whatever. Mm. You've always kind of yeah, always nodded a, towards those masters. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's true, yeah. So it's not, it was nice to come back to it, you know, and I've uh, got a song on there called My Valentine, which just, uh, it just kind of popped out, you know, it just wrote itself almost. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's nice. So I played as producer and we, we did it. And uh, yeah, you know. Fabulous. Well, thank you very much. Have a lovely Thanks, Christmas, Stuart. too. All right, man. And listen listen to you. You're ever so good on the radio. Oh, bless you. I love you. Thank you. Hey. Eric Clapton on the uh, Spanish guitar. Eric Clapton playing the guitar there, yeah. And that, I mean, obviously that is written in that 
old classic sort of standard idiom. But I think I think I think that's lovely, and I think he, you know, you can hear someone who really knows his way around music, and the fact that it's quite a dark. The, the melodies and things are quite. It's a lovely song with a kind of hint of darkness to mean, it. Yeah, my Valentine, first time on the radio. Uh, not that that particularly matters, but you know, I hey, think it why does. Not, you know, I think okay. it does. First time anyone's first yeah. time anyone outside the industry has heard. I that. think you could download it on uh, to if you're a premium member on his website from yesterday. But, uh, but it's yeah, definitely yeah. the first time on the radio for which we yeah. are very grateful. Well, indeed, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mel's been on, said, lovely interview, which indeed it was. So uh, it was, uh, he sounded very relaxed, and uh, but he's, I love that bit about him thinking of him as a younger self. It's lovely, that, so, isn't you know, it? I'm not half the man I used to be. You'd have been twelve, been 12. clearly. You know, it's just great. Where been did 12. I get that experience from? Although, of course, he, you know, in all the we, with the stock and whatever, he'd lived a life by then, hadn't that's he? The from thing. which to draw. That's the thing. I mean, what was he when the Beatles split up? Twenty seven. Incredible. Unbelievable isn't it? to have really. changed the world. Really. So uh, that was done. Uh, that was done backstage. But it didn't backstage. sound like backstage. So uh, what was his dress? room like was it kind of uh, sumptuously appointed no, what did he have in it well, well when we've same situation really i've done them i've been backstage before at things and he and he and they kind of it's not something but he would he likes to have a little area where it's you know there are drapes mm. and there are nice little coffee you know there's coffee tables and there's a couple of nice settees does he have a load of jackets on a metal rail no, to choose from? no that's in that's in wardrobe right this yeah. i think very much is where he greets people yeah. you know bless them all like snacks? like me snacks no let me tell you about <laughs> the snacks because i go in and he says all right Stuart, now have he says now here have one of these chocolate raisins they're very good he said but i recommend that you have them with the cashew nuts right. the combo is a good taste and he was absolutely right so we actually began th- th- we started the interview twice because we did actually both begin the interview like this from paul <laughs> so we said and we both said probably better eat these first hadn't we yeah, yeah. but nobody is well he has a fantastic knack at making people at their ease doesn't he and he is and you know it is considering he is like mozart and shakespeare is an extraordinary thing. I mean, obviously he's got like he needs people around him and everything. It's a, it's a, it's were, a you massive... aware, were you aware of a kind of entourage of minders? Or, yeah, or, but not y- in any kind of not in any kind of officious way. Treat no. it very nicely. But you are aware that there are people all the time going places, doing things, people fetching and carrying things, security and and wardrobe and light. You are aware that this is probably like a. I, I hate to use the word because he is such an. I nearly said I've, I've, I caught myself nearly saying actually in the question I asked him about this with military. You know, like a military operation, and I thought that's probably given Paul's outlook on the world not the best use of words. So I didn't use it in the end, but it is like that kind of thing. It has the logistics of a small of a small battalion. Of course, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, this was after he'd done the sound check gig, was it? This was after his oh, hour. Yeah. This was after an hour of mm. sound check in inverted commas, yeah, which is sure. really a little parlour gig, if you like. So is he wearing his stage clothes? What was he wearing? Was he kind of wearing? He must jeans have been and a, jeans right. and a kind of nice black draped jacket. Yeah, and you know, and he and comes out. There's a couple of lovely moments which I'll just mention very quickly. Yeah, he fine. um he. Uh, like, he, he hitched his kecks up at one point and got this kind of woo from the girls, and he sort of went, you know, this is rather ridiculous, you cheering, like, come out of my age pulling his pants up. <laughs> and then the two girls behind me, who's very kind of pretty Latin girls from Argentina, clearly, and I said it's because they had Argentinian strip on, and on the back it said Messi and McCartney. Right. Clearly the twin heroes. Unveiled this huge flag, uh, which had Paul McCartney's face on it and an Argentinian flag, and we okay. know we love you, Paul, and all this. And he said, oh, Argentina, Argentina, and then muttered... Yeah, what about that handball, though? So kind of <laughs> no one in particular, which was great, yeah. Uh, great. So, uh, nice interview, and thank you very much to uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah, for, thank you very uh, much for the time. Yeah. yeah, no, that was great.